From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, listeners, and welcome to an episode of Ropecast. Hi, Roger. Hello, Peter. I think we'd have to say we're sorry, first of all, for the acoustics in this room where we're recording it. Yeah, it's getting near Christmas and there are so many parties going on. Yes, and this was the only halfway quiet room we could find for this episode, which will air after Christmas, I will have to yeah. say. Um, speaking of Christmas, um, when I listen to the news, I don't think that the Brits are feeling very Christmassy right <laughs> this time. All I ever hear about is Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. Yeah, and it's... Um, and frankly, the more I hear about it, the less I understand. Yeah, I think it's 100 days until the date when Britain is supposed to leave the European Union. So oh, there's not mm -hmm. much time left. At the time of this recording, yeah. you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, maybe we should do a little recap on a lot of terms that are... Yeah on the news these days. Because I think um, British people have also learned a lot since the referendum in 2016. They voted, and many of them had very little idea what they were voting about, whether for or against. Mm -hmm. I mean, starting with this word Brexit, if you look for the origin of it, I mean, the Oxford English Dictionary, um, a reliable source of information, says the first use of Brexit that they've come across was in 2012. And this is interesting because... It starts with the fact back then that Greece looked like it might not be able to stay in the Eurozone. So Grexit, with a G, was actually referring only to Greece leaving the Euro and going back to its own currency. So it wasn't about Greece leaving everything. Mm -hmm. And then people started talking about Brexit And that really means something very much more serious because it, this is not just the currency. Britain never accepted the euro as its currency. So here we're referring to a pretty big deal. So this has gotten to be a very serious term, which, by the way, has coined the term Frexit by now, oh, yes. about France maybe yeah, getting out. Yeah. From the EU, another term that everybody knows, I guess, yeah. European Union. And our Prime Minister, Theresa May, was not very helpful when asked about Brexit, and she said, Brexit means Brexit. Yeah, but what does it mean? Yeah, I, and I was reminded of Lewis Carroll, you know, through the looking glass, mm -hmm. where Humpty Dumpty says, when I use a word, it means what I choose. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is highly relevant here, because people use this word Brexit, uh -huh. and different people, different groups of people, actually mean very different things. What do you mean? Well, do you mean leaving every kind of European institution, mm -hmm. which would cover not just trade, commerce, but would cover movement of people, um, all kinds of uh, international agreements that have been made by the, the European that Union. these four freedoms that are always that talking about? That comes into it, yeah. That, that's, and if you what think, does that mean, four freedoms? Well, one of them is freedom of movement, and this is highly significant, because a lot of people, when they voted for Brexit, when they voted to leave the European Union, were thinking primarily about the numbers of migrants entering the UK. And they thought, we can't stop European migrants unless we leave the EU. Okay, that's one freedom. What are yeah. the other three? Well, they talk about the four freedoms. So one covers goods, that is physical objects. Uh -huh. And then there's capital, that is money. Uh -huh. And then there's services, oh, which okay. is very important to the British economy. I mean, that's something like... Well, banks. Three, three quarters of Britain's economy is based on services. It's hugely important. And then there's people. So those are the four freedoms. Okay. And the UK government has tried to be selective here and say, well, we're happy with some of this, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. and then the East, EU started to respond by saying... No cherry picking. You can't just pick bits out that you like and reject some of, some of the other things. That's an interesting term. Germans pick raisins. <laughs> <laughs> well, grapes, maybe. Uh, no, raisins. It's oh, okay. raisin picking right. if you want to pick out just the sweet ah, right. things. Yeah. So um, it's a similar image. Okay, so yeah, yeah cherry picking is yeah. what it's called. And when they're referring to that, obviously they're referring to the kind of withdrawal agreement. That's it, yes. This is the agreement between the UK government 
and the remaining 27 countries in the EU about the terms for Britain leaving in, in uh, March mm -hmm. 2019. So there is a leaving date, which is agreed, mm -hmm. and the basic agreement is now in place. And the one that is supposedly going to get parliamentary approval, although it's not at all clear at the moment, is usually referred to as the Chequers Plan. Chequers is the the summer official residence of the British Prime Minister. And Theresa May invited her That's cabinet there. Let's call that. And they came to an agreement mm -hmm. about this framework for Britain leaving. But right after that, uh, uh, members of the cabinet started to leave. Mm. So although they apparently agreed to this, uh, they didn't really agree. And so they had to, had to leave and One say... One huge problem is apparently what they call the backstop. I still can't make heads or tails of it. We don't have a lot of time, but could mm -hmm. you, before we stop, explain what is the backstop? Maybe I should just, uh, for the moment, speak about other possible ways that Britain might leave, okay. and then we'll come back to Ireland, mm -hmm. the backstop, in the, in next, the next episode. Thing. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. So people talk about a Norway option, because Norway is not a member of the European Union, mm -hmm. but it does um, have membership of the single market, which is important for trade and commerce. Uh, it does allow free movement. So many British people don't want this Norway style. And then people talk about the Canada model, which gives you almost free trade in goods, but is highly restrictive when it comes to services. And of course, the, many British people, the city of London, big banks, insurances and so on, think, well, that's no good because it's too restrictive. So this explains why at the moment, in December 2018, it is still impossible to know what the final result of all this is going to be. Oh, God. Okay, so we'll still have to wait for that. Maybe by yeah. the time we air this, it will have been decided. Yeah. But still, let's get back to our listeners on the backstop let's do problem. That. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. Thank you.